Hello, everybody. Welcome to Selenium for Beginners. My name is Rex Allen Jones II. In this video, I will cover the browser methods for Selenium. There is a total of five Selenium method categories. Each category has methods for automating applications. In no particular order, we have a list of the following categories. Browser methods, web element methods, weight methods, navigation methods, switch methods. Browser methods are a group of methods that perform actions on a browser. Web element methods are a group of methods that perform actions on web elements. A web element is anything you see on a browser. Wait methods are a group of methods that pause between execution statements. For example, when your web page is loading, the statement will pause until the web page finishes loading. Navigation methods are a group of methods that either loads a web page, refresh a web page, or move backwards and forwards in your browser's history. You know how you leave one page and want to go back to the previous page? Navigation methods will help us perform actions such as going back to the previous page. Switch methods are a group of methods that switch to alerts, windows, and frames. An alert is a pop-up that comes on your screen. We have to switch to that pop-up and perform an action. Over the next few weeks, I will demo all of these Selenium method categories. Here's the tutorial plan for Selenium browser methods. First, we are going to look at the descriptions. Then demo the browser methods, followed by a practice exercise. Now let's view the browser method descriptions. There is a total of six methods within this category. In alphabetical order, the six methods are close, get, get current URL, get page source, get title, and quit. Close closes the current active window. Get loads a new web page. Get current URL gets a string defining the current web page URL. Get page source gets the complete page source of the loaded web page. Get title gets the current page title. Quit stops running the driver and closes the window. Many times, automation engineers alternate between using close and quit because they are similar methods. I will demonstrate the difference between both methods using LinkedIn as our AUT, application under test. Let's demo the Selenium browser methods. We start by writing web driver driver. Add our test annotation and name the method demo Selenium browser methods. Instantiate the driver by writing driver equals new Chrome driver. Then import web driver, test annotation, and Chrome driver using shortcut keys, control shift O. The first 
Selenium browser method we are going to use is git driver dot git. Do you see how the description states load a new web page? I want you to notice something while going through these browser methods. Git is the only browser method that receives a parameter. It receives a parameter of string URL. That means to complete this statement, we must enter a URL as a string data type. HTTPS colon two forward slashes www.linkin.com. Make sure to write the entire URL, including HTTPS. The web page will not load if we enter www.linkin.com. Let me show you. See how only a blank web page opens up? Now, watch what happens when I add HTTPS colon two forward slashes. LinkedIn opens up. The next Selenium browser method is get current URL. We write driver dot get current URL. The description states get a string representing the current URL. Notice this method does not receive a parameter like the get method, but it returns a value. The description also shows returns the URL of the page currently loaded in the browser. Do you see string web driver? String is the return type and web driver is the interface. When this method returns a value, we have the option of assigning the value to a string. It's not required. For demonstration purposes, let's assign the value. String, then name the object reference str current URL. Print str current url by writing sys out control space within the print statement i will write what is the current url then the object reference str current URL. Now let's run. Go to the console and verify the URL. Get title is the next method and it's similar to get current URL. We write driver dot get title. And we see the description states title of the current page. This method also returns a string value. I'm getting ready to assign the value string str title and print the value 
what is the page title plus S-T-R-T-I-T-L-E. The title is LinkedIn, log in or sign up. Console shows the correct title. The next Selenium browser method is get page source. We can view the page source by right clicking on a page then selecting View Page Source. Selenium will get all of this HTML, which is an acronym for Hypertext Markup Language. Write driver dot get page source. This time, I will not assign an object reference like get current URL and get title. However, I will print the page source when it is returned to the method. We can print the value by cutting driver dot get page source then pasting it into the print statement run In the console, we see the page source. Let me show you how to maximize the browser window before discussing the last two Selenium browser methods, close and quit. Did you notice the browser window was not maximized when executing our statements? We saw part of the browser window and part of Eclipse IDE. To maximize the browser window, type driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. Now let's run and you will see how the window is maximized before loading LinkedIn. Now let's talk about close and quit. Do you see these Chrome browsers in the bottom of my taskbar? I must click X in the right corner to close all browser windows. Each of those windows showed up in my taskbar after executing our statements. Both methods close and quit will perform that task of closing a browser window. However, the best way to see a difference between the methods is looking at task manager. Go to the details tab. We see Chrome driver six times. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Go back to Eclipse and let's start with close. Write driver dot close. And we see the description states close the current window. Let's run. That time, the browser window closed without me manually clicking X in the top right corner. Task Manager now shows ChromeDriver.exe seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Personally, I prefer to use Quit, and you will see why. Let's check out the quit method by writing driver dot quit. And the description states quits this driver, closing every associated window. Run. The task manager still shows ChromeDriver.exe seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. ChromeDriver.exe does not remain in task manager because the quit method stops running the driver. And that's why I prefer quit. The quit method quits the driver and closes the window, while the close method only closes the window. That's it for Selenium browser methods. The practice exercise is create a test script for Amazon, load Amazon, get the title, get the current URL, then quit the driver. If you want to do extra, feel free to get the page source and close the browser using close method. It may seem simple, but if you are new to Selenium or refreshing your skills, every bit of practice helps. Practice makes improvement. Here's the test case I use to demo Selenium browser methods. You can use this test case under practice test steps for your Amazon test script. Load Amazon, get the title, print the title. Get the URL, print the URL. Quit the driver and view task manager. Download this video's presentation, automation code, and test cases at tinyurl.com selenium browser methods https colon two forward slashes tinyurl.com forward slash s e l e n i u m b r o w s e r m e t h o d s Thank you for watching Selenium Browser Methods. Hello everybody. Welcome to Selenium for Beginners. My name is Rex Allen Jones II. In this video, I will cover the web element methods. The browser methods were covered in a video called Selenium Browser Methods. I will cover all five method categories with each category having its own video. The web element methods are a group of methods that perform actions on web elements. 
A web element is anything you see on a browser, such as buttons, text boxes, check boxes, drop down menus, and hyperlinks. If you're interested, you can download this presentation, automation code, and the test cases at tinyurl.com forward slash Selenium Web Elements Methods. In this tutorial plan, we are going to cover description for web elements, demo web elements, and have a practice exercise. Let's start with the description. There is a total of 16 web elements, but we will cover clear, click, find element, get attribute, get text, send the keys, and submit. Clear clears or erases a value in a text field. Click clicks a link, button, checkbox, or radio button. Find element finds the first web element based on the locator type you use to find your web element. Get attribute gets the value based on a certain web element attribute. Get text gets the text from your web application. Send keys inserts or types text in a text field. Submit operates like Click method in a form. Now let's demo the web element methods. We are going to use Sharp Spring as our application under test, AUT. First, we click the login hyperlink. Next, we will use the login page to showcase the web element methods. Let's go to Eclipse. Web driver, driver at before test annotation. We set up our test public void set up, then execute on Chrome. Driver equals new Chrome driver. Input the annotation and the classes. And maximize our browser. Driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. Our test method will be Demo Selenium Web Element Methods. Test Annotation Public Void Demo Selenium Web Element Methods. Let's load Sharp Spring using the Git method. Driver.git HTTPS colon two forward slashes S H A R P S P R I N G dot com. The first web element method we are going to use is find element, driver dot find element. This method is used for finding web elements on a browser. However, the find element method would find the first element if there is more than one element with the same attribute value. For example, the home page has a menu bar with hyperlinks. If we inspect the links, we will see the class attribute has the same attribute value for all of these hyperlink elements. Let's inspect the products element. It has 
mega hyphen menu hyphen link as the value for class. Let's also inspect login. It has mega hyphen menu hyphen link as the value for class. Therefore, if we use class name as the locator, the first element, which is products, will get found every time. That's why it's best to use a locator with a unique attribute value. The hyperlink's name, which is login, is a unique value. Let me ask you a question. Do you see within HTML that login has a space? Our Selenium script will not work if we have a space before login. It will not work because the application does not have login with the space. Driver dot find element by link text. I will remove the space. Dot. The next web element is click. We can also see other web elements such as clear, get attribute, get CSS value, and there are more web elements in this IntelliSense. Do you see web elements at the end of the methods syntax? That gives us a tip that a particular method is a web element method. I am going to select click. On the login page, we are going to type some text for email and password. Driver dot find element by ID dot send keys. Send keys is a web element method that enters text into a text field. I'm going to enter Rex Allen Jones at hotmail.com for email. Copy and paste this code for password, but change the value for send keys to Selenium for beginners. Let's go back to the application and get the ID for email and password. The ID value for email is username and ID value for password is password. Username, password. The next web element method we are going to use is clear. Driver dot find element by ID password dot clear, which will clear Selenium for beginners. After clearing the text, let's click the sign in button. We can use the click or submit method. Recall from our PowerPoint slide, the submit method operates like the click method. If the web element is a form or within a form, an exception shows when submit is used outside a form. For now, let me show you how click works with the sign in button. Driver dot find element by ID dot click. Let's inspect the button. The value for ID is login button, which shows the button tag is located inside of the form tag. The button tag disappears when I collapse the form tag.
Let's run. Invalid username and or password. The click method works. I need to let you know, there are cases when click will not work in a form. If click does not work, then use the submit method. Now let's change click to submit, then run. Submit also works. Did you notice the error message is different when using click and submit? The error message after using submit shows, please enter your password. But the message states, invalid username and or password after using click. You will get no message if the email address is invalid. Submit will not work if we try to click the login link because the login link is outside a form. I will change click to submit. Let's look at the description for submit, which shows it throws a no such element exception if the element is not within a form. Let's run. No such element exception. No such element. Element was not in a form, so could not submit. Change. Submit back to click. That's the difference between click and submit. The next web element is get text. We are going to get the error message that shows up after clicking the sign in button. First, we will find the error message, driver dot find element by XPath. Next, we will get the error message, dot get text. The description states, get the visible inner text of this element. This description, can be confusing if you don't know HTML. Let me use W3Schools to help explain the get text method and HTML. Learn HTML, introduction. Do you see how tag name has an opening? And closing tag, the only difference is closing tag has a forward slash before tag name. Content goes here. The get text method returns the content between the opening and closing tag. Sometimes HTML does not contain a closing tag. HTML tags normally comes in pairs. That means the closing tag is not required. Go back to our application under test. Let's inspect the error message. In this case, the error message is between the opening and closing H4 tags. Copy and paste XPath. The get text method returns a string. So
So let's assign the value to a string. String str error message. Now let's print the error message. S Y S O U T sys out. What is the error message? Let's run. What is the error message? Please enter your password. To summarize the get text method, it will return most data you see on a web page. It will not return data if there is no content after the opening tag. For example, the password placeholder will not return data if we use the get text method. Although we see password on our application, it does not have content. There is no content after the opening tag. The blue highlighted section is the opening tag for input, which have five attribute names and values. Let me show you how get text will not work for this element. Driver dot find element by ID password dot get text. Assign the value to string str place holder. Sys out get text. I will enter my str placeholder. Let's run. The console does not show data after I will enter my. We must use the get attribute method when we see data on an application, but HTML does not have content for that element. I would use the same code and change get text to get attribute. Also change the object reference. Add double quotes to the get attribute value. The description states Get the value of the given attribute of the element. That means we can get any value by writing the attribute name. Let's verify which attribute name has the attribute value password. The placeholder attribute has the password value we want to print. There are multiple attributes with password as a value but we need placeholder because it has capital P for password. Attributes type, ID, and name contains a lowercase p for password, which does not match the application. Let's run again.
The attribute displays, I will enter my past word. Let's end by closing the browser. After test, public void, tear down, driver dot quit. That's all I have for Selenium Web Elements methods, which are methods that perform actions on a method. In this video, we covered four types of web elements. A hyperlink, text fields, a button, and text within an application. Practice exercise. You can use free CRM and Sharp Spring for practice exercise. Let's look at the test cases. We walk through Sharp Spring in our tutorial. Here's your practice test case for free CRM. You can download your test cases, your presentation, automation code, and the test cases at tinyurl.com, Selenium Web Elements Methods, https colon two forward slashes tinyurl.com forward slash s-e-l-e-n-i-u-m w-e-b-e-l-e-m-e-n-t M-E-T-H-O-D-S. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to test for a displayed and enabled element. There are times when Selenium has to wait until an element is available before performing an action. Other times, the element is available, but it is disabled until another action is carried out. That's the scenario with the following test strip. The delete button is disabled, although it looks enabled. We must click a checkbox before clicking the delete button. We are going to test the delete button before clicking the checkbox and after clicking the checkbox. Inspect the delete button. And the value for ID is btn delete. Copy the value, go to Eclipse. I already have the scripts to set up, turn down, load the AUT, sign into the application, and click the admin tab. Now we write driver dot find element by ID. Assign it to web element button delete. Is the delete button displayed? Button delete dot is. You see the description shows is this element displayed or not and returns whether or not the element is displayed. Do you also see how the data type is Boolean? That means it will return true or false. True is yes and false is no. Is enabled checks if the element currently enabled or not. Returns true if the element is enabled. Let's select is displayed and assign it to a boolean called is delete button displayed. Next, is the delete button enabled? Boolean is delete button 
enabled. Equal button delete dot is enabled. Let's print the answers. Sys out before click is delete button displayed and enabled. Skip a line tab. Display equal is delete button displayed. Skip a line tab. Enable is delete button enabled. Skip a line. Let's run. Before click, is delete button displayed and enabled? It is displayed, but not enabled. Let's go to the AUT so we can inspect the checkbox. According to the Solidium Locator Rankings, we should use the ID value located in the input tag. But let's find the checkbox using the text function and XPath axes. Inspect the username. And it's located in the A tag. So we write two forward slashes, A bracket, text equal two single quotes, Fiona dot grace. Bingo. The checkbox is located in the input tag preceding the username slash preceding two colons input two brackets one copy the value go back to eclipse driver dot find element by xpath paste the value dot click we must check if the delete button is displayed and enabled again if we don't check the delete button our test script will maintain the same true false values that was returned before clicking the check box therefore let's copy is delete button displayed and is delete button enabled and also the print statements change before to after and run We see before click shows displayed as true and enabled as false. After click shows displayed and enabled both as true. That's it for testing displayed and enabled elements. Hello and welcome. In this video series, we are going to look at how to handle drop downs. You may hear drop down menu, drop down list, or drop down the box. Either name is okay. 
first is selecting values from a dropdown, then getting values from a dropdown, and the last is deselecting values from a dropdown. Dropdowns are common elements, but they are not all created the same. Most dropdowns contain a select tag name. However, there are cases when the dropdown may not contain a select tag name. For example, when I inspect this second element, it contains a span tag name. This series will focus on the select tag name, although a dropdown can be other tag names. Let's start with selecting values from a dropdown. Our first application is orange HRM. We are going to select options from job title, subunit, and include. Inspect the dropdown for job title, and we see the select tag with an ID value of imp search job title. Go to Eclipse. Selenium has a class called select that helps with selecting options from a dropdown. There are two ways to find a dropdown and select an element from the dropdown. The first way is to find the web element then add the select class that takes the web element. The second way is to start with the select class, then add the web element. I will use the first way on job title, then use the second way on subunit and include. Driver dot find element by ID. Paste the value. Then assign it to a web element with an object of find job title. Select is the class provided by Selenium. Select job title is the object. New select. New select is a constructor that receives a web element. Hover over the error, and it states the constructor select is undefined. It's undefined because we have not added find job title as the web element. The purpose of a select constructor is to make sure the element is located in a select tag. If it is not located in a select tag, then an unexpected tag name exception is thrown. Now let's select an option from the job title drop down. Write select job title dot and we see a lot of methods. However, there are three methods for selecting an option. Let's write select and the methods are select by index, select by value, and select by visible text. Start with select by index which selects the option at the given index. All indexes begin with zero. Go back to the AUT and inspect the options. Index zero is all. Index one is account clerk and index two is CEO. Let's select index one, which is account clerk. Go back to the Eclipse IDE, select job title by select by index 1. Account clerk. The next drop down is sub unit. Write select select sub unit equals new select. Now, let's go to the AUT and get the web element for subunit. ID is imp search subunit. Let's look at the options. We see 0, 4, 5, 6, 
and seven. Let's use six for IT. Go back to Eclipse and write driver dot find element by ID. Paste the value. The next method will be select by value. So we write select subunit dot select by value. It select all options that have a value matching the argument. Notice the parameter is a string. Therefore, we write six in double quotes. The last drop down is include. Inspect. And the ID is imp search termination. Look how the drop down shows the same information as the option tags. This is the visible text. We are going to use past employees only. Go to Eclipse. Select, select, include. Equal, new, select. Driver dot find element by ID. Paste the value. Select include dot select by visible text. This description states select all options that display text matching the argument. Past employees only. We should see account clerk, IT, and past employees only in the drop down after running the program. All of the expected values are selected on the AUT. That's it for selecting a value from a drop down list. Next is getting values from a drop down. In this session, we are going to get values from a drop down. Let's use values from this tools QA continents and continents multiple select drop down boxes. There are three Selenium methods for getting values from a drop down. The three methods are get first selected option, get options, and get all selected options. Let's start with get first selected option. Imagine we have a test requirement for making sure Asia is the default continent out of these seven continents. First step is to find the element. And it has a select tag. The ID is continents. Copy and go to Eclipse. Next step is to import the select class after writing select select object equals new select. Locate the element after importing the select class. Driver dot find element by ID. Paste the value. Now let's get the default option. Select dot get first selected option. Also print the option. Sys out first default continent. Uh oh, there it is. Get the method, then get the text of all of the continents. This method can also be used to get the most recent option we select. If we hover over the method, it returns the first selected option in this select tag or the currently selected option in a normal text. Write select dot select by visible text 
North America. We have the option of asserting the value to verify if it is correct using test ng, but let's print. Sys out. What's your continent? Select dot get first selected option dot get text. Let's run. The drop down shows North America and the console shows First default continent, Asia. What's your continent? North America. Pass. For the next two methods, let's use continents multiple select as the drop down. Inspect and start by getting the ID, which is continents multiple. Do you see this? multiple attribute this multiple attribute shows we can select multiple values from this drop down go to eclipse this test script will get all of the options in the drop down say for example we have a requirement that wants us to validate each continent. We write select, select equals new select. Driver dot find elements by ID. Paste the value. Select get options. This method returns all options belonging to this select tag. The data type is list web elements. Therefore, we assign all of the continents to list web element with list continents as the object. Import. Let's write a print statement that says get all continents. We must loop through all of the continents, then get the text of each continent. Use the for each loop. Write for control space, select for each, change web element to continent. Now print the continent. Sys out tab plus continent get text. Let's run. we see all seven continents. The last method is get all selected options. We are going to use the same multiple select dropdown box. Therefore, let's copy the select statement from get options and paste it. Now, we're going to select some options from the drop down. Let's select the first three Asia, Europe, and Africa. Select Asia by index zero, Europe by value EU, and Africa by visible text. Go back to Eclipse. And we write select by select by index zero Asia.
select by value EU Europe select by visible text Africa now get all of the selected options by writing select by get all selected options which returns all the selected options belonging to this select tag it also has list web elements so we assign the selected options to list web element and name the object selected continents let's loop through the list for web element continent colon select the continents sys out tab continent dot get text let's write one more print statement before the loop sys out what continents did you select and run? We see Asia, Europe, and Africa are selected. On the console, we see Asia, Europe, and Africa. That's it for getting values from a dropdown using Selenium's select class. Next, we are going to deselect values using Selenium's select class. In this session, we are going to deselect values from a dropdown. Let's use W3Schools multiple select box. Just like the previous session, we see a multiple attribute. First, let's find the element and we see view frame source. View frame source shows this element is located in a frame. Therefore, we must switch to the frame before selecting an option, then deselecting an option. Scroll up the DOM and we see iframe. iframe result is the value for ID and name. You can watch videos 29 through 32 where I introduce frames, then show three ways to switch to a frame. The select tag has cars as the value for name. In our test script, let's use all four deselect methods. The methods are deselect by index, deselect by value, deselect by visible text, and deselect all. We see four options in this dropdown. The values are the same words as visible text, but have a different capitalization. Let's go to Eclipse. Switch to the drop down that's located in a frame by writing driver dot switch to dot frame. Now let's find the element driver dot find element by ID. ID is our frame result. Next is Selenium's select class. Select select equals new select import find the element driver dot find element by name 
cars. In this test method, let's look at three deselect methods after selecting three options. Select dot, select by index, zero. Balbo, select by value, sob, and select by visible text, opel. We deselect by writing select dot, and there are four deselect methods. Deselect all, deselect by index, deselect by value, and deselect by visible text. Let's start with deselect by index. Deselect by index deselects the option at the given index. Zero. Next is deselect by value. Select dot. This method deselect all options that have a value matching the argument. Next is deselect by visible text. It deselects all options that display text matching the argument. Opel, let's run. Did you see how three options were selected, then deselected? The same concept applies for deselect all. Copy and paste all of the select statements. Let's add one more statement for select select visible text Audi then write select dot deselect all the select class also has a method to check if the drop down is a multiple select option select dot is is multiple. It returns whether the select element support selecting multiple options at the same time. Let's go ahead and print to validate the drop down supports multiple options. Sys out drop down supports multiple selections. Select is multiple. Let's run. All four options were selected and deselected. That's it for deselecting values. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Selenium for Beginners. My name is Rex Allen Jones II. In this video, I will cover the navigation methods for Selenium. The browser methods and web elements methods were covered in a video called Selenium Browser Methods and Selenium Web Element Methods. The Selenium navigation methods are a group of methods that either loads a web page, refresh a web page, or move backwards and forwards in your browser's history. In this tutorial, we are going to cover navigation method descriptions, perform a walkthrough of each navigation method using LinkedIn, then demo the navigation methods. First are the navigation method descriptions. Selenium provides four navigation methods. 
I have five methods listed in this slide, but we have an overload method that performs the same task. In alphabetical order, we have the back method, forward method, refresh method, and a couple of navigate.2 methods. The back method moves back in your browser's history. Forward moves forward in your browser's history if it's not the last page. The refresh method reloads all web elements on your page. There are two navigate.2 methods which load a new web page. The second navigate.2 method is the overload method. An overload method is a method with the same name in the same class, but a different signature. Both methods receive a URL parameter, but a different data type. The data type makes these methods have a different signature. First method has a string data type, while the second method is overloaded and has a URL data type. Now, let's walk through our navigation methods using LinkedIn. First, we load LinkedIn.com. Next, click the forgot password hyperlink, then enter an email or phone. I'll enter my email Rex Allen Jones at hotmail.com. After entering email, let's refresh the page. We see the text field web element no longer shows email. Now, let's go back to the previous page. Selenium automates clicking the back button and forward will take us to the page we just saw. That's all of the navigation methods. It's time for the demo of navigation methods. Web driver, driver. Before test annotation, let's set up our test. Public void set up. In the previous two videos, Selenium browser methods and Selenium web elements methods, I forgot to add system.set property. My drivers are added to environment variables, so system.set property is not required when writing my automation code. You can watch video number seven, how to bypass system.set property to see how I added the drivers to environment variables. In this video, I will add system.setProperty, webdriver.chrome.driver. Then go to my drivers folder to get the path for Chrome driver. Shift, then right click to copy as path. Now paste the path. Driver equal new Chrome driver. Driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. Here's our first navigation method. Driver dot navigate. Navigate provides access to all five navigation methods. Dot two. Driver.navigate.2 loads a new web page. We can select any one of the first two options that shows void navigation. Navigation indicates it is a Selenium navigation method. HTTPS colon two forward slashes www.linkin.com.
Let's start our test by writing test annotation. Public void demo. Selenium navigation methods. After loading LinkedIn, we are going to click the forgot password link. Driver dot find element by link text forgot password dot click. Next is the email web element driver dot find element by ID dot send keys. Inspect the web element. The ID is username. Username. I will send Rex Allen Jones at hotmail.com, which is my actual email for LinkedIn. Then refresh the page, which is a method for reloading all web elements. Driver dot navigate dot refresh. I'm getting ready to run. The email address is not available after refreshing the page. Now let's go back to the previous page. Driver dot navigate dot back to show that our automation test script went back we will get the title driver dot get title and assign the value to string home page title Print the title, sys out. What is the home page title? The last navigation method is forward. Driver dot navigate dot forward which will go to the forgot password page. We will also get the title after using forward. Driver dot get title and assign the value to string password page title. Print the title, sys out. What is the forgot password page title. Let's run. What is the home page title? Log in or sign up? What is the forgot password page title? Reset password LinkedIn. That's it for Selenium navigation methods. We loaded a web page using navigate.2, refreshed the web page, using navigate.refresh, went back to previous page using navigate.back. And went forward to the forgot password page. You can download your presentation and automation code at Selenium Navigation Methods, https colon 
two forward slashes, T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com forward slash S-E-L-E-N-I-U-M N-A-B-I-G-A-T-I-O-N M-E-T-O-D-S In this video, I will cover the weight methods for Selenium. The browser methods, web elements methods, and navigation methods were covered in previous videos. Number four, the weight methods are a group of methods that pause between execution statements. We wait for a statement to finish before moving to the next statement. A question someone may ask is, why do we want our test scripts to pause between statements? We want our test scripts to pause between statements because of dynamic content on a web page. An example of dynamic content is a web page that has elements that you do not see when first opening the web page. Those elements wait a few seconds, then show up. Therefore, we need our test script to also wait a few seconds, then perform an action after the element shows up. Wait complications are one of the reasons we have errors with our Selenium automation test scripts. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss why we have wait complications, the different type of wait methods to handle those wait complications, then demo all of the Selenium weight methods. Let's start with the weight complications. Weight complications are outside components that cause problems with our test script. Some of those outside components are server location, server performance, machine performance, and JavaScript engine performance. Network is not in this list, but it's another outside component that causes weight problems. Server location causes weight problems because the information has to travel. Information travels to the server location, then it travels all the way back from the server location. When it comes to server performance, our browser sends a ping to the server asking for all of the information so the website can load. If our server's performance is slow, then it will take a long time to respond. Machine performance is different with fast machines and the slow machines. A fast machine will render elements on a web page quick. On the other hand, a slow machine with small memory will run our test script slower than a fast machine. JavaScript engines are embedded in browsers and web servers. Therefore, the performance is important when testing web applications that have a lot of JavaScript. Something rendered on one browser may load faster than another browser. Here's two screenshots that compare browsers for a JavaScript benchmark test using JetStream. The URL is browserbench.org forward slash JetStream. I ran a test on Firefox and Chrome. Firefox has a score of 159, while Chrome has a score of 137. To be honest, I ran a test on Internet Explorer two times, and no score was returned. The bigger score is better. In this case, we see Firefox outperform Chrome. In addition to the browser, the version of our browser dictates how fast or slow test scripts execute. Next is the different type of wait methods. By default, Selenium executes statements very fast. Soon as one statement is finished, Selenium immediately executes the next statement. That can be a problem because Selenium will not wait for a dynamic element. Therefore, 
we need to instruct Selenium to wait for dynamic elements before executing the next statement. If Selenium does not wait, then an exception shows up. The exception shows up because our test script is attempting to interact with an element that could have changed or may not be available. We have five Selenium weights method types to handle dynamic elements. Thread.sleep is not a Selenium weights method, although it causes execution to pause or sleep for a certain number of milliseconds. I added it to this list because many automation engineers implement thread.sleep as a wait method. However, it is not a wait method, but it is a sleep method. Thread.sleep is not efficient or reliable. It is not efficient because it will stay sleep for the time we set even if our statement is finished and ready to move to the next statement. It is not reliable if we consider a weight complication such as machine performance, where one machine could possibly run slower than another machine. For example, if we add a hard-coded value of 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds, to thread.sleep, a faster machine may render the elements in four seconds, but a slower machine may render the same elements in six seconds. As a result, the same test script will pass on one machine and fail on another machine. Page load timeout sets the wait time for a page to load. Set script timeout sets the wait time for JavaScript to execute. Implicit wait determines the wait time to search for an element. Explicit wait pauses execution until a time has expired or an expected condition is met. Fluent wait is a specialization of explicit wait, which also pauses until time has expired or an expected condition is met. Page load timeout set script timeout and implicit wait are three built-in Selenium wait methods. All three methods are configured using the timeouts interface. Now, let's demo the Selenium wait methods. Our first Selenium wait method is page load timeout. Page load timeout sets the wait time for a page to load. Driver dot manage dot timeouts dot im. In this IntelliSense, we see all the three built-in Selenium wait methods: implicit wait, page load timeout, and set script timeout. Select page load timeout. Enter three for time. Time unit dot. Time unit represents different lengths of time, such as days, hours, and microseconds. Let's select milliseconds. Next, load the orange HRM page. Driver dot get. HTTPS colon two forward slashes open source hyphen demo dot orange hrm live dot com print the title sys out what is the page title driver dot get title and run As expected, our test script returned timeout exception because the page did not load in three milliseconds. This exception 
provides a good example of what happens if our page does not load in the max amount of time. Let's imagine if we have a requirement that states we need the page to load in three seconds. If the page does not load in three seconds, then we must report a defect. Change our time from milliseconds to seconds. Selenium will wait a max of three seconds for the orange HRM page to load. If the page loads before three seconds, then execute the next statement, which is print title. Run again. Now the page loads without a problem. What is the page title? Orange HRM. The entire test script executed less than one second. 0 0.959. Recall from our introduction that thread.sleep is not a wait method, but it is a sleep method. I'm going to show you how it's a sleep method. Thread.sleep and 3,000 milliseconds. Add throws declaration, import interrupted exception, run again. We see the same result. Orange HRM is the page title. However, look and see how long it took for this test script to execute. Four seconds. Thread.sleep waited for the whole three seconds, although the page had already loaded and was ready to execute the print statement. This is one of the reasons why we should not use thread.sleep as a wait method. It's not dynamic like page load time app. That's it for Selenium wait method page load time app. Next is implicit wait. Let's walk through this test script for an AJAX web page. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. First, we load the web page, which is Welcome to the Internet. This web page is powered by Elemental Selenium, where you can use Selenium like a pro by Dave Helpner. Next, we click the dynamic loading hyperlink. After clicking dynamic loading, the next step is to click example two. The last step is to click the start button. Do you see how we are waiting for the dynamic element to load? Finally, in our test script, we are going to find Hello world, get the text of hello world, then print hello world. Let's run our test script. Uh-oh, no such element exception. Unable to locate element. Which element? The string for hello world. Our test script executed so fast that it did not wait for the next step, which is find hello world. 
That's why selenium provides weight methods so our execution can pause between these type of statements. If not, our test script will fail every time. Let's use implicit weight. Driver dot manage dot timeout dot implicit weight. The description states specifies the amount of time the driver should wait when searching for an element if it is not immediately present. This means Selenium will wait for all instances of driver. Enter five and time unit is seconds. Selenium will wait up to five seconds. Let's run. Now we see hello world and passed for our test script. Implicit weight would have waited for lines 44, 45, 46, and 48 because they have a driver instance. If the element was not found for those lines, then an exception would have been thrown. That's it for implicit weight. Next is explicit weight. This is the same test script from implicit weight where we load the page, click the dynamic loading hyperlink, click example two, then click the start button, followed by finding hello world, getting the text of hello world, and printing hello world. I'm going to run this test script again. It's going to fail because of this dynamic hello world element. Fail. Explicit weight is used on one web element at a time. For that one element, which is hello world, execution will pause until time has expired or an expected condition is met using the web driver class. Let's start by writing web driver weight and weight as the object reference equals new web driver weight. Pass in driver and time out in seconds as five for the parameters. Five represents the maximum number of seconds Selenium will wait for an element before throwing an exception. Here's the power of explicit wait. After clicking the start button, we write wait dot until expected conditions with an S dot. So far, we are going to wait until an expected condition is met. There's many of expected conditions. Our goal is to check if hello world is present. We can select visibility of elements located, which is an expectation for checking that an element is present. Locator will be by XPath. Go back to the application, inspect Hello World, copy XPath, paste XPath. Let's run.
Hello World is printed to the console. All of the expected conditions or examples that assist us with writing our own customized explicit weight statements. Let's break down explicit weight. With the first line, we have the Web Java Weights class, which has a constructor of Web Java Weights and two parameters, driver and file. Let's view Java Docs for the Web Java Weights class. It has three constructors, one, two, and three. We use the second constructor, which ignore instances of not found exception. Not found exception is an exception that is thrown when an element is not found. We see both parameters, driver and timeout in seconds. Driver is the web driver instance, while the timeout in seconds is the timeout in seconds when an expectation is called. The next line is wait until expected conditions. Wait is the object reference of the web driver wait class. Until is a method that repeats until one of the following occurs. Number one, the function returns neither null nor false. Number two, the function throws an unignored exception. Number three, the timeout expires. Number four, the current thread is interrupted. Since hello world was returned, number one applies to our test script because hello world is not null nor false. Expect the conditions is a class that has so many methods. However, we use visibility of elements located. And the by locator was XPad. That's it for explicit weight. Let's recap and discuss implicit weight versus explicit weight. These are the two most popular Selenium weight method types. Implicit weight uses a single code line, while explicit weight uses multiple code lines. Implicit weight is used on all web elements. That one code line for implicit weight impacts all web elements in that test script. However, explicit weight sets a wait time that is used on one web element. Expected conditions are not required for implicit weight, but expected conditions are required for explicit weight. Here's a list of 16 expected conditions. This is not the complete list. All of them would not fit in this table. I think it's nearly 20 expected conditions that are missing. If we choose to, we can create our own customized explicit weight using the expected conditions class. Now, here's the controversy between implicit weight and explicit weight. Which one should we use? It's recommended we use explicit weight over implicit weight. We must handle the slow loading elements like hello world on an element by element basis. According to Mastering Selenium Web Driver by Mark Collins, implicit weights were not originally a part of the Web Driver API. They are a hangover from the old Selenium 1 API. Implicit weight was not going to be added to Selenium Web Driver API, but people were used to it and wanted it back. There are at least two reasons for choosing explicit weight rather than implicit weight. The first reason is implicit weight can slow down our test. And the second reason is implicit weight can break explicit weight. 
Next is fluent weight. Web driver weight extends fluent weight, which pauses execution until the time has expired or an expected condition is met. Web driver weight is a specialization of fluent weight that uses web driver instances. Therefore, at the core of explicit weight is fluent weight because explicit weight implements web driver weight. Here's a sample of fluent weight that I would use in this demo. Go to Tools QA and take a look at our AUT application under test. We will test a countdown timer that now shows buzz buzz. The timer starts at 40, count down to zero, then show buzz buzz. Driver.get. Paste the URL, fluent weight, control space, copy and paste the sample. Let's take care of the red X's and lines. Import weight, fluent weight, and no such element exception. There's two no such element exception packages, but we will select the package from org.openqa.selenium. Import function by selecting the package com.google.common.base. Modify the seconds to include time units. Dot. Time unit dot. We see the first comment states waiting 30 seconds for an element to be present on the page. That comment is referring to the with timeout method, which sets how long to wait for the condition to be true. The next comment states checking for its presence once every five seconds. This comment refers to the polling every method, which sets how often the condition should be evaluated. The ignoring method will ignore the no such element exception. We see Parameters show exception to ignore. I will change the polling every method to one second. This test script will fail because the countdown timer on Tools QA starts at 40 and the with timeout method remains at 30. In our demos, I don't want to always show you the happy path scenarios, how our test script looks when it passes, but also show the failures. This will return an exception. Let's modify the sampler code. First, I will change foo to element. Next, we must find the element which is countdown timer. Therefore, I will write driver dot find element by xpath. path. 
then go back to our AUT Tools QA and get the XPath value. Inspect the element, copy XPath, and paste XPath. Assign the value to web element timer. After finding BuzzBuzz, Buzz, we want to get the text of BuzzBuzz. Buzz. So let's write timer.getText. Then assign the value to string message timer. The last modification is to write an if-then-else statement. You can watch video number 15, Java's conditional if statements, to get a better understanding of all three if statements. Within this if statement, we're going to print buzz buzz if message timer equals buzz buzz then print the sound of an opportunity clock is message message timer else print message timer here's a breakdown of this if statement if the message timer equals buzz buzz then print the sound of an opportunity clock is buzz buzz if it does not equals buzz buzz then print whatever the message shows on tools QA after the clock reaches 40 seconds do you see the red X and how our return type is web element that means we must return a web element the error message shows this method must return a result of type web element. In this case, our web element is timer. So we must write return timer after printing buzz buzz and write return null if the message timer is not buzz buzz. Now the error message goes away. You can watch video number nine relationship between Java's classes, objects, and methods to get more information about return types. We are finished modifying the sample code. This test script will wait until the timeout expires or the condition becomes true. What is the condition? The condition is when buzz buzz shows up on the page. Our code will poll every second, which means it will check the condition every second. The no such element exception will get ignored. We can add more exceptions to ignore if we choose to. The purpose of this function is to find buzz buzz and return buzz buzz. We have two arguments. WebDriver and WebElement. WebDriver is the parameter for the apply method. WebElement is the return type for the apply method. WebDriver is the input, while WebElement is the output. 
driver is the input's parameter which helps find an element. The element is assigned to web element timer. We get the text, then assign the value to message timer. When message timer equals buzz buzz, the value is printed and returned as an output. Now let's run demo fluent wait. We see the polling for every second starting at 40, then counting down. This test script should fail when the countdown timer reaches 10 because we are waiting 30 seconds. Yes, the timeout exception showed up. Expect the condition failed. Tried for 30 seconds with one second interval. This time, the test script will pass when I change. 30 to 41. I would also change the comments 30 to 41 and 5 to 1. Run again. The sound of an opportunity clock is buzz buzz. An advantage of using fluent weight with the function element is the flexibility of passing an input object type and returning any object type. Object type, input. Object type, return. In this scenario, we pass web driver and returned web element. That's it for Fluent Weights. Thank you for watching Selenium Weights Methods. You can download your transcript, presentation, and automation code at tinyurl.com forward slash selenium hyphen weights hyphen methods. HTTPS colon two forward slashes T-I-N-Y URL.com forward slash S E L E N I U M hyphen W A I T hyphen M E T H O D S. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Selenium for Beginners. In this video, I will cover number five switch methods for Selenium. The transcript presentation and code will be available on GitHub at Rex Jones II, Selenium for Beginners, and tinyurl.com switch methods. Switch methods are the last group of Selenium method categories. We already covered browser methods, web elements methods, navigation methods, and wait methods. The switch methods are a group of methods 
that switch to alerts, windows, and frames. Selenium will not allow us to directly interact with a web element inside an alert, window, or frame unless we execute a switch statement. We are going to discuss the type of elements that require switching, Selenium methods used for switching, then demo the Selenium switch methods. Let's start with the type of elements that require switching. First, we have frames, then alerts, and the last is windows. A frame is a tag within a frame set tag. The frame defines one window within a frame set. Let me show you by using W3 schools. Do you see the three frame tags that's located inside of the frame set tag? When I click try it for yourself, we see three frames on the right side. Frame A, frame B, and frame C. On the left side, we see the same three frame tags within a frame set tag. Watch what happens when I change the value for SRC within a frame tag. I am going to change frame B to W3 schools, then click run. A W3schools.com window shows up within frame B after entering the URL. Also, look what happens after clicking the frame. An option named View Frame Source shows up. Frame A and frame C shows the same option, View Frame Source. However, we do not see View Frame Source when right-clicking outside of frames A, B, and C. Our demo will focus on iFrame, which is very similar to what we saw with frames. iFrame is short for inline frame, which is used to embed documents within a document. Try it yourself. The iFrame tag uses an SRC attribute just like the frame tag. iFrame also has an option named View Frame Source when I right click. However, there is a difference between frame and iFrame. An iFrame is not located within a frame set tag, and the window for an iFrame cannot be resized. When I hover over the window, the icon for resizing does not show up. Let's go to frames and notice we can resize. The window. Most applications I come across have an iframe tag because they are designed for interactive applications. Iframes is a better option for adding other websites within a window. One reason an iframe is better is because developers can keep track of less HTML documents while using iframes. With automation, whether we come across an iframe or frame, we must always switch before performing an action. Here's an example. The frame is the blue login to application box. We must switch to the frame before entering data in the username and password fields. Also, before clicking the submit button. Most of the times, it's difficult to notice a frame by looking at the web page. An exception shows up if we do not switch to the frame. The next element that requires switching is alerts. Alerts are better known as pop-up boxes. It's a box that contains a message. In this example, the alert has two buttons, an OK and cancel button. We also see a title that states 
pop-up alerts box with some pretend data between the title and two buttons. There are three types of alerts with the purpose to number one, send information. Number two, get confirmation. And number three, receive inputs from a user. We are forced to switch and interact with the alert when it pops up. We are not able to interact with the web page. That's why the web page is gray and disabled. The last element required for switching is windows. It can be a new window or tab. This example shows a new window on top of the web page. We see a title that states, switch to this new window, then perform an action. All windows have an ID called a window handle. A window handle is unique and alphanumeric that allows us to switch to the window. We can perform any action after switching to the window. There are different Selenium methods used for switching. Here's the methods used for switching to a frame. Frame web element element selects a frame by web element. Web element is the data type and element is the frame element we will switch to. Frame string name or ID selects a frame by its name or ID. String is the data type. Name and ID are the HTML attributes. We can switch by the name of the frame or ID of the frame. Frame int index selects a frame by its index. Int is the integer data type. All indexes start at zero. Default content select the first frame on the page or the main document if the page contains an iframe. Parent frame is important if the focus has changed from the parent context. By default, Selenium has focus set on the parent. Next is the methods for alert. Imagine a pop-up that has two buttons like one of our previous slides. The accept method accepts the alert by clicking the OK button. And the dismiss method clicks the cancel button. If you want to get information from the pop-up, use the get text method, while the send keys method types data into the pop-up box. Last, we have three methods for switching to a window. The alphanumeric window handle is assigned to each window. The get window handle method gets the window handle of the current window. And get window handles gets the window handle of all the current windows. The switch to window method switches focus between the windows. Now, let's dive into our demo of Selenium switch methods. Hello and welcome to Selenium for Beginners. In this video, I will cover how to switch to a frame. First is frame using web element. Let's walk through our application under test. First, we load the application. Then click the login sign up hyperlink. Next, we click the link at the bottom. Log in, sign up with mobile number and password. Finally, we enter our number or email. This test strip will fail and throw an exception if we do not switch to a frame. But which step requires a switch? We are going to switch after clicking the log in sign up hyperlink. Let's go to Eclipse and create our automation test strip. We set up our test with system.setProperty on Chrome using 
driver equals new chrome driver. Then maximize the window driver dots manage dots window dots maximize. The test method is switch to frames. Now load the AUT driver dot get. Add a dynamic weight statement. This here is an explicit weight statement for five seconds. Why add a weight statement? We are going to wait until 24 seven help shows up. I am going to reload the page and you will see how we wait until 24 seven help and these other elements show up. Finish the wait statement. You can watch video number 22 to see the benefits of an explicit wait. Now we click the login sign up hyperlink driver dot find element by xpath dot click. The xpath value will contain text for login sign up. Then we wait for this dialog to load. We are going to wait for the bottom hyperlink because that's the link we will click. This is a customized XPath value for login sign up. I will create a video explaining how to create a customized XPath value. We add the wait statement, then click the link at the bottom. Last, we enter the phone number or email driver dot find element by ID. Dot send keys. Get the value for ID. Inspect the element. We see the value for ID is input underscore zero. Send one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Let's run. Nothing happens after clicking the login sign up hyperlink. Our test failed. Let's go back to our AUT and see why it failed. Right click and we see view frame source. That means this dialog is a frame or an iframe. It is like the example from our introduction when looking at frames in W3 schools. Notice the difference when I right click outside the iframe, we do not see view frame source. That lets us know we must switch before performing a command. Go back to Eclipse and switch to frame. Driver dot switch to. The description states sends future commands to a different frame or window. In this IntelliSense, we see different methods for switching to a frame or window. We are going to switch to a frame. Here's the frame methods we reviewed in our introduction. Frame index selects a frame by its zero base index. Frame string selects a frame by its name or ID. Frame web element selects a frame using its element. Select frame.
Now, let's inspect an element within the our frame dialog. We are going to inspect the bottom link. The blue highlighted part is the link, but let's scroll up to the iframe tag. This iframe tag has an SRC attribute that contains login. Control F to find the value. Let's write our customized XPath value. Two forward slashes, iframe, opening and closing bracket contains c-o-n-t-a-i-n-s opening and closing parenthesis at symbol s-r-c which is the attribute name comma two single quotes login l-o-g-i-n is written inside the single quotes the yellow highlight indicates we have located the iframe copy the value. Now let's switch to the iframe. Driver dot find element. By XPath. Then paste the value. Let's run. We see phone number 123-456-7890. Switch two frames, passed. Another way of writing the same test script is to declare a web element. I am going to copy and paste this code. Write web element, name the object reference, login. Next, we find the iframe and assign it to login. Since we already found iframe, the last step is to switch to the iframe. But this time, we will use the object reference login. Driver dot switch to frame web element. Login. This is just another way of writing the same statement for frame web elements. The previous way used one line to find and switch to an iframe. This way uses two lines to find our frame, then switch to our frame. Let's change the phone number to an email. So when it runs, we see a different value. ABC at email.com. Both methods, switch to frames and switch to frames underscore web element passed using frame web element. That's how we switch to a frame using web element. Thank you. And next, I will show you how to switch to a frame using frame string. The transcript presentation and the code will be available at tinyurl.com switch hyphen 
methods. And GitHub at Rex Jones the Second Selenium for Beginners. Hello and welcome to Selenium for Beginners. In this video, I will cover how to switch to a frame. Next is frame using string, which selects a frame by its name or ID. Let's walk through the application under test, AUT. First, we are going to load chase, then add a wait statement for this welcome box. Finally, we enter a user name. Go to Eclipse. The method name is switch to frames underscore string. Let's load the application driver.get https colon two forward slashes www.chase.com. Next, we find the username element driver.find element by ID send keys at test 3400 inspect the element copy the value for id paste the value Add a wait statement before entering the username. A dynamic explicit wait for five seconds. Next, wait until user ID input field is visible. Then run. There is no information in the username text field. There is no information because the welcome sign in box has view frame source. View frame source indicates this box is a frame or a frame. Let's inspect. Scroll up to our frame tag. In addition to the SRC attribute, notice the iframe has an ID and a name attribute with a value of logon box. The previous switch example used a value within SRC, but we are going to use logon box for name and ID. Let's go back to Eclipse and perform our switch. As expected, we see a failure. This time, let's use string for switching. Driver dot switch to dot frame string. The description shows select a frame by its name or ID. Frames located by matching name attributes are always given precedence over those matched by ID. This means we can use the name attribute or ID attribute, but name ranks higher than ID. However, the iframe we are switching to has the same name and ID. Therefore, it does not apply for this scenario. Add logon box within double quotes, then run. This time, username has information and switch to frames underscore string pass. That's it. And thank you for watching switch to a frame using string. Next is switch to frame using index. The transcript presentation and code will be available on GitHub 
at Rex Jones the Second Selenium for Beginners and tinyurl.com switch hyphen methods. Hello and welcome to Selenium for Beginners. In this video, I will cover how to switch to a frame. Next is frame using index, which selects a frame by an index. Let's walk through the application under test. HTML source inline frames. Scroll down to the interactions section and we see two boxes. Click me and tick tick. If we click the box named click me, then the box named tick tick changes to boom. These boxes will be used for our test. Inspect both boxes and we see iframe. We need the index for click me. Control F, two forward slashes, iframe. And there are 12 frames. Search, search, the click me iframe is three of 12. Therefore, the index is two because indexes start at zero. Go to Eclipse. The method is switch to frames underscore index. Let's load the page driver dot get. Next, we are going to scroll down the page using a JavaScript executor. Import the JavaScript executor class, 0 and 1250 are coordinates. The first number, 0, is an x-axis, which scrolls horizontally left or right. A negative number scrolls to the left, while a positive number scrolls to the right. In our scenario, I modified the y-axis from 0 to 1250 to scroll down the page. A negative number scrolls up the page. Now we switch to the frame by writing driver dot switch to dot frame. The description for index states select a frame by its zero based index. Our index is two because we need the third option three of 12. The last step is to click the hyperlink name, click me. Before executing this test method, let's see the exception by commenting out the switch method, then run. Fail. No such element exception. Unable to locate element. Which element? The click me. Hyperlink. Let's uncomment the switch statement and run again. We see boom, replace tick tick, and the test method passed. We covered three ways for switching to a frame. The most reliable way is to use frame web element. Next is frame name or ID. We can use frame index, but it's the least reliable way for switching to a frame. Personally, I do not recommend index because the application can change and add more frames or iframes. As a result, your index can change 
and your test script fail. That's it. And thank you for watching how to switch to a frame. The transcript presentation and code will be available on GitHub at Rex Jones the second Selenium for Beginners and tinyurl.com switch hyphen method. Hello and welcome to Selenium for Beginners. In this video, we are going to switch to pop-ups using Selenium switch methods. Another name for pop-ups is JavaScript alerts, or we can say alerts. There are three types of alerts. First is information alert. Second is confirmation alert. And the third is prompt alert. The information alert displays information to the user with only one button. A confirmation alert has information with two buttons and a prompt alert receives inputs from the user. Here's an example of a confirmation alert. Do you see how the background is gray? Sometimes the main web page is gray. One of the reasons the background is gray is to let us know we cannot interact with that part of the web page. Therefore, we are forced to perform an action on the alert. We can perform an action with one of these four methods, accept, dismiss, get text, or send keys. Let's look at the information alert. We are going to switch to an alert, then accept the alert. We see three buttons. Click the information alert. There is only one button with information that states, I am a JS alert. At this point, we cannot click any of the three alert buttons or perform any kind of action on the main page. There is not even an X to close the alert. Also, I am right clicking the mouse and I'm not allowed to inspect the alert box. In spite of that, we must switch to this alert and click the OK button. Notice the result says you successfully clicked an alert. Let's go to Eclipse and automate clicking the OK button. The setup method will set the property, open Chrome, maximize the window, and load the AUT. First, we find and click the JS alert button. Driver dot find element by xpath dot click inspect and find the button two forward slashes div two brackets at id equal two single quotes content forward slash div one one forward slash unordered list ul one one forward slash list item li one slash button copy and paste the xpath value next we wait for the alert to become present by adding an explicit wait statement. Web driver wait equal new web driver wait. Pass in the driver with a max of five seconds. Import wait until expected conditions alert is present now 
switch to the alert by writing driver dot switch to dot alert. The description states switches to the currently active modal dialog for this particular driver instance. In order to click the OK button, we must accept the alert. Therefore, we select accept. Let's go ahead and print the result. Inspect the result. And it has results as the value for ID. Driver dot find element by ID result print sys out and place the value inside sys out get the text of the result and let's run Switch to information alert passed. And we see the print statement. We did not see the alert because execution ran so fast. I'm going to add a sleep statement before the switch statement thread dot sleep. Add throws declaration exception. Thread.sleep is not a good practice, but for this demo, I want you to see the alert. Let's run again. That's it for switching to an alert and accepting the alert. Next, we are going to switch and cancel a confirmation alert. Now, we are going to switch to an alert, then cancel the alert. Go back to our AUT, and the second button, click for JS confirm, is a confirmation alert. We see an OK and the cancel button for us to confirm the message. Let's automate these steps by clicking the cancel button. The result shows you clicked cancel. I'm going to copy and paste the code from information alert method to click the JS confirm button We must change the list item from one to two because it's the second button in the list. We are still going to wait for the alert to become present, then sleep execution for two seconds so we can see the confirmation alert. Add a throws declaration. Exception. Change except to dismiss. Except is a method that clicks the OK button, while dismiss is a method that clicks the cancel button. Keep the print statement and let's run. Switch to confirmation alert passed. And we see the print statement, you click cancel. Next, we are going to switch to a prompt alert, get text and send text. Last, we are going to switch, get text, send information then accept the alert. 
The third button is the prompt alert. We see an entry box for us to write information. Selenium switch and click OK. The result shows you entered Selenium switch. After switching to the alert, getting text from the alert and sending text to the alert, it is similar to the web element. In this case, we will use the alert interface. Change the list item from one to three so we can click the prompt alert button. Wait for the alert to become present and sleep for two seconds. Pausing our test script will help us to see the prompt alert. However, this time we must separate the switch to alert and accept method. Start by writing the alert interface and alert object reference. Driver dot switch to dot alert. This switches to the alert. Import alert. Now get the text. We write alert dot get text and send keys by writing alert dot send keys. I am an automation engineer. The last step is to click the OK button by writing alert dot accept. I almost forgot to print the alert. Sys out and place alert dot get text inside six out. Let's run. Switch to prompt alert pass. And it shows the print statements. I am a JS prompt and you entered I am an automation engineer. That's it for switching to a prompt alert, getting the text and sending text to the alert. Hello and welcome. My name is Rex Jones II. In this video, we are going to switch to a window using three Selenium switch methods. Those three window methods are get window handle, get window handles, and switch to window. The get window handle method gets the current window handle, and the get window handles method gets all the window handles. Window handle is a unique alphanumeric ID assigned to each window. We use that unique ID for the third method, switch to window. The switch to window method switches focus between the window. Let's use tools QA for the AUT. We are going to get the window handle of this main window. Click the new browser window button and get the window handle of both windows. Then switch to the second window. In Eclipse, we already have a setup and teardown method. Now let's switch windows. The first step is to get the window handle of the main window, driver dot get window handle. We see it returns the current window handle and can be used to switch to this window at a later date. Notice the data type is string. Therefore, we assign the window handle to string and the object is main handle. Print the ID, sys out, 
main window ID. Main handle. Skip a line and inspect the button. The value for ID is button one. Go back to Eclipse. Let's scroll down the page before clicking the button. Import the classes. Driver dot find element by ID. Button one dot click. So far, we have the main window ID and click the button. Next, we get the window handle of both windows. Driver dot get window handles. This method returns a set of window handles, which can be used to iterate over all open windows. This data type is set stream. Assign the ID to set string. And the object is all handles. Import the class. Let's verify. We have two open windows by printing the size. Sys out windows open after click all handles dot size size will return the number of windows now we are going to loop through both windows then switch to the window let's use an enhanced for loop for control space you can watch the previous video to see an enhanced for loop for string window handle all handles if main handle equals window handle then print the window handle for window one get the URL and get the title now it's time to switch to the window else driver dot switch to dot window window handle copy and paste the print statements then change one to two Let's run. The main window has an ID. As expected, there are two windows open after clicking the button. Notice the main window and window one have the same ID. They have the same ID because they are the same window. However, window one and window two have different IDs. The IDs are unique and will show a different ID every time we execute. The URL and title are shown for window one and window two. That's it and thank you for watching how to switch to a window. Part one, you look for the PDF documents are free. Programming books for UFT. Programming books for Java. Here's the Selenium automation book. And TestNG. Subscribe to get notifications for future videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.